the idea of problem making, which which we talked about last time, rather than problem solving, mm -hmm. and I always just say you're just circling around the mystery, and that's really I feel what any of us are doing on Earth anyway is just orbiting this general sense of kind of unknowing. I mean, gosh, I. Uh... <laughs> feel like <clears throat> we shouldn't maybe talk too long about this because I'll cry, but uh, talking about love, you know, you mentioned just now, the thing that generates love is thing that we don't have access to in others, or you know, maybe to extend that further. Is that, is that maybe a, a paraphrasing of? I think so. I think it's, uh... It's very effusive. I don't know that it's easy to put into words this sense, but I, I think there's a common human denominator that we all know what I'm talking about, even if what I'm saying is too literal sounding. Or squishy or, you know, whatever. So, so uh, to kind of con continue along the road of that um, insight, um, then, trust or then love necessarily involves trust because that space of unknowing yeah we just have to trust that it is never achievable um but always a destination yeah so that to me also you know to come back to this thing of art um this thing of making kind of internal engine that is you know, whatever it is you're doing in that room with a bunch of weird shit, uh, that seems to me to be kind of the central thrust uh, for you. This idea of maybe love and trust is a very, very kind of generative point. Yeah. Um, That's a tough one. I'll, I think that's an actually really helpful thing I should keep in mind. Like I kind of want to just make a big sign on the back of my door that says love and trust to kind <laughs> of reinforce it's my funny mind. Though. Sorry, yeah. go ahead. No, to, to reinforce the, yeah, I, no, I, I'm into that. I don't think I, I guess I've always seen that as more of an analogy than, than what's happening, but I mean, it totally is happening. I just from personal experience, I know like when I'm in the studio and you know, like we, we all have very particular, um, you know, personality traits. <laughs> yeah. Mine, mine are probably super particular. Uh, but I know when I'm in the studio and, you know, really in, engaged in a process, like, um, it is so conceptual, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, I could like, we could sit down at, at that very moment and talk about time. We could talk about space, you know, you can you talk about um, ontology as a kind of extension. Um, uh, what I'm trying to get at, I guess, is that feels very similar to, what I know of love from like from Freddie Prince Jr. rom-coms hmm. to like I miss the shit out of my grandma like that same sort of indecipherable uh, stuff. yes I definitely uh, do, you, um, do you know the um there is a there's a play Rico Garcia Lorca that, um, I'm probably going to mess this up, but talks about the uh, Duende. Um, there was actually a really amazing lecture given by Nick Cave, not the artist, but the musician, about what it takes to write a love song. Um, Duende describes just that Duende describes actually interesting foreshadowing uh the person who's talking about Duende, we're doing a studio visit with next friday <laughs> oh, nice. yeah um that's an aside uh but Duende being uh you know the thing that might elicit goosebumps the thing that might uh you know 
tingle in your spine, the thing that draws you to action, the, um, that space of like um, inconceivable affectivity. Yeah, I feel like... It's even extraterrestrial, I'll say. I feel like I, I totally... <laughs> this is gonna sound horrible. But I totally have that. I can't have that in the studio. <laughs> I I have that before the studio when I'm when I'm doing the conceptualizing and the the conversation. When I'm in the studio, I'll definitely get the I miss the shit out of my grandma. Um, and that that Dwinde too. But it like makes me I can't work if it's if it's too much in front of me. Um, it's like a safety issue. <laughs> um, but it's there, it's in other facets of, I think, my practice. But this, like my studio is the place I come to work. Like I am actually, I don't even like to have furniture in here because there's, I don't even like to sit down or take a break. It's like all business in here. Um, I mean, but, what's that? Well, it's, it's overly romantic too, right? I mean, we might, uh, you know, we had a whole generation of American painters that subsisted on this idea of, you know, losing oneself in the studio or the absence of kind of conscious contact with the thing. And I love that your counterpoint is work. You just Yeah. Said, it's, um, I mean, all of that is there for me. I'm a super romantic person but I can't let it take over when I'm in here. <laughs> um, it has to be a pragmatic place to be or else I just, I'll make mistakes or I won't get anything done or I'll just, I'll, I can't give in. Um, but then that labor, it's twofold though, because then that labor becomes, it, it maybe it gets channeled into these romantic notions about labor also. So that's maybe another layering of complexity.